It's the BTS Mini Pod! <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. Yeah, um, I guess welcome to the very first mini pod since in pro- maybe the last, because who knows when all three of us will have seen the same movie on opening weekend again. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Why has it got to be my fault? All I know is when I found out Danae was going to see Star Wars Rise of uh, the Rise of Skywalker on opening week, and I was like, wait a second, we can <laughs> yeah. all talk about that. Wait yeah, a minute. for sure. Danae is relevant. <laughs> You're always relevant. Uh, so we're going to do it. Welcome to the very first BTS mini pod uh, on the Rise of Skywalker. And this is where Jonathan chimes in with some sort of uh, something pod. What, what, what? Uh, oh, my God. I don't even know. Um... What is it? What's happening? I've never been on a mini pod before. What's happening? <laughs> A risey pod, right? Yeah, sure. Risey pod works. Uh, a walkie pod. Uh, a ray pod. I a don't ray know. Pod? Yeah, risey pod. That'll work. Uh, whatever the case may be, we're gonna chat uh, some Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> what did you guys think of the movie? Uh, you know, I I, I just really want to start with Danae because she never gets a chance to really talk yeah, movies sure. that are just out recently. Danae, how did you feel about this movie? What did you What did you think? I loved it. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> What did you love about it? Um, so interesting thing. Over the weekend, we were out at this condo and they only get cable TV. And so all the cable uh, are showing Star Wars movies. And it was the one with um, Obi-Wan Kenobi Young and Darth Vader. So the prequels. Young before he turns into an evil yeah, guy. So the prequels. Prequels. Okay. And listen, Star Wars fans, I apologize in advance. I'm not your girl, <laughs> but I'm going to do my best. But you so, have seen most of the movies. I've seen all of the movies. Okay. Um. Yeah. Except for the except for Solo and oh, Rogue One and Rogue One. I didn't see those. Okay. Um. Anyway. Uh. So I was watching those movies in the background, going like in my head, going, "How much has changed in movie mm-hmm. telling since those came out?" Because there was, you know, there's so much action in Rise of Skywalker. There's so much going on. Like, yeah, it never stops. It doesn't stop. Yeah, from the moment that it's the opening scene until the end, it, you're a pop, 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 pop. I, I have several negative things to say about this movie. Uh, I was never bored, though. Right. That's for sure. Yeah. Agreed. And it could, it could be a negative thing in that there isn't really a moment to breathe. I feel like there was a lot to do. And so this is kind of, it felt like a day when you're you're going on errands with your mom and, and you just can't stop the whole day and you're just being taken from place to place to place to place. And you just, you're kind of just being shown what to do and when to do yes, it. Yes, it very much feels like going on errands <laughs> with your mom. Yes, that is very much a part of this movie. It was like, and there was, so, but um, I love, I loved it. I was tracking. My husband was like, man, that was too much. Like I needed a break. That was, mm. I don't even know how to think about, I need to see that a couple more times to think about all that happened. But what, and he said, there's so much there's so much to do. It's like we're here, then we're going here, then we're going here, and uh, then this is revealed, and then this is revealed, and this is revealed, and it's all happening super, super fast. And I really did agree. There was like that little frenzy kind of feel to it, but well, I could, loved it. You could tell they, they they had a lot to do when the opening crawl basically does an entire movie's worth of exposition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the opening crawl is telling you huge plot points and huge things that have happened. Mm-hmm. It's almost like JJ was like, uh, just let's leave the Last Jedi behind, and I'm going to invent a whole new thing, you know? And yeah. so he had a lot to do. I don't have a... I've liked everything that's come out. Uh, I've never been personally offended by, like, where the direction of movies has, has been taken. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely saw, like, a lot of people saying that there's a lot of hate on Twitter, but all the tweets that I saw were people talking about that there's hate, but I didn't see any hate. <laughs> you didn't actually see the hate. Right, so... Um, I can confirm. I have seen the hate. I'm sure, yeah. You guys have a broader <laughs> mm-hmm. audience than I do. Yeah. Uh, so, and I, I really hated that it was spoiled for Jeremy. That really pissed me off. Like, Apparently that happens all the time, and all I have to say is stop it. Just why do, why I, do maybe people want to be him? like that? Yeah, no, they absolutely. They, so he they, just has to like turn his whole yeah. phone off for days if he's going to enjoy a movie. And I just, that really bothered me. But I wasn't spoiled, so I had a fun time, you know, watching it and being revealed. I had gasp moments where I was like, oh! <gasps> Like, are we, are we talking spoilers? I was going to say, first, let's give our general thoughts, and then we'll do a spoiler section. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, So for I, sure. I, said, I had my <gasps> moments, and then I had these laugh moments, and then I had a cry moment, and so, um, and all, and then my brain was just buzzed, because there was so much coming at me, but I love when, when movies can, I love it when a movie's like, keep up, brain, and I'm like, okay, I got you. I, <laughs> I got you. you. I can do this. And I love Ray. I mean, 
She's just so she's one of the big heroes of my cinema world. Absolutely, one hundred percent. That's where I'm going to start with my general thoughts. Is you could put Ray in a movie, and the rest of the movie could be trash, and I think I'll still have a great time. Yeah. I love that character so much, um, and a lot of that has to do with the Force Awakens, uh, the, where she was introduced. Um, I just find her so compelling. I I think she's for me the perfect type of heroine, a uh, female hero, where it's not about her being a female. Wonder Woman was kind of like this too. It's not about her being a woman. It's it's more just about her being Ray, you know. Yeah. And, and there's just I I just I love her very much. So that's where I would start. I had a really good time with this. Um, I I definitely have flaws. I will definitely talk definitely talk about them in spoilers. Um, and and they are big flaws. Uh, but overall. I'm just a Star Wars fan, and I just have to admit that, like, when you're pushing certain buttons, which, by the way, JJ knows how to push those buttons, uh, and that's that's why I enjoy it. Um, and that's just it's going to work. That stuff's going to work on me, and it worked on me, uh, and I had a good time. What about you, Jonathan? Um, I mean, overall, I liked it. Um, I think I'm kind of on the same level as you. Um, there was um, there was way too much fan service for my personal taste. Um, I get why they did it, but. I, that's what I'm saying. Know. That's the stuff I'm talking about. Like the fan yeah. service for the most, there were a couple moments where I rolled my eyes, but yeah. for the most part, that fan service works on me. I am a fan and yeah. I enjoy being serviced, you know, like it is just, that's <laughs> well, the way that, it that, is. That, that, uh, yep. I'm with it, you, Jonathan. <laughs> it, it sounded exactly the way I meant it to sound. <laughs> Um, um, but you know, like not every franchise can do that. Not every yeah. franchise can can pull something out of this Rolodex of characters right. and put it in front of you. So when it's done, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it wasn't even so much rolling my eyes. It was just some of it just took me out of the movie. No, right. sure, uh, sure. Yeah, um, I love Ray as well. Um, and in fact, like, and that was the thing. Like looking back at this whole like trilogy, I don't really know if I know the story they're trying to tell or. If it's just, I don't know that I care that much about the story, but the one part of it that I've loved the whole way through is, is Ray and Daisy Ridley's performance. Um, and then I've liked how they've instituted, um, some of the form past characters. Like I think Chewbacca's had a really interesting, uh, storyline or mm-hmm. story arc throughout this series and you know the stuff they did with solo and force awakens and whatnot but um overall i liked it like it's a you know it's a solid b like i i enjoyed it that's exactly the grade i would give it a solid yeah b. but if you graded it danae what would where would you put it an a yeah yeah nice i loved it i loved it so much and I have thoughts on what the movie is trying to tell us. That's oh, I will that. say I've seen a lot of the negativity on Twitter or online. And what gets me though is I feel like a lot of it is um, is not necessarily it, it's not necessarily something. I'm trying to think of how to say this. It, it doesn't seem to be criticism about what the movie is. It seems to be more about what they feel like the movie should have done. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is always like I have a hard time like taking that seriously. Well, I will tell you this: uh, we did review it on Sif Pop, and my mm-hmm. co-host Andrew uh, absolutely 100 percent hated this movie, even more than he hated Last Jedi. So um, yeah, he so, did dislike Last Jedi, right? Oh, he hated Last. Oh Jedi. yeah, yeah. That's what um, I thought. So it, it's one of those things where I have definitely been in the presence of and evil <laughs> no of somebody whose perspective is different what i love about andrew is he never he doesn't get toxic with the way he expresses it mm-hmm. he just you know he very much has his opinions uh so i can't i think even though all of us at least kind of liked it and Danae loved it um i think i can speak to some of those uh you know those things because you know andrew and i had a discussion yeah so. and I, I think there's some justification in like being let down that they didn't do certain things i sure. mean I, i'm not saying there's not any but uh some of it just gets a little out of hand sometimes yeah all right let's move into spoilers Kaiser Miss Luke's what? father is actually Darth Vader. She's, She's the sister and the daughter. She's they just no, 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 no. I'm reading the books. We gonna tell you stuff about the plot, and if you don't want to hear it, then you should press stop. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm definitely using that. All right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, what do we want to talk about first? Are Guys, gonna... they kiss. <laughs> oh, you loved that. I loved it so much. I didn't mind it either. It I, was such a sweet moment. It really was. Uh, I thought it really was. Because Ray and Kylo. That's yes, the only kiss, right? And I love Kylo yeah. Ren. Like, I've loved him when he was dark. I I just like his character. I like his presence. And you could tell all three movies, there's this, like, 
attraction to each other and this appreciation and this curiosity and this fear of each other. Like he's afraid of her and her powers. He's afraid of like, like she's afraid of him too. It's like, but then they also appreciate it. And then they kind of come together, but she sees him for like, like what, like this clarity in his soul. Cause she has this ability to like really, you know, see what's going on in yeah, the she ether says, I, or whatever. I wanted to take your hand. I wanted to take Ben's hand. Ben's hand. Yeah. But then at the end, she's like, Ben. And then it, it, it wasn't like a, let's fucking have babies kiss. <laughs> it was a, it was a like, almost just like this love kiss. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like those sweet, like, I see you. I appreciate you. Oh my God. Absolutely. You're here. 100%. Excitement kiss. It wasn't a romance thing. I just loved that. It was I loved affection. it so much. It yeah. was an affectionate kiss. And I'm then, really glad to hear that because that was a scene that didn't really bother. It, I mean, I don't know that I loved it, but it, it didn't bother me. It was and thrilling. that's something that's been talked about a lot. A lot of people Talk do about, not like, like that. Stockholm Syndrome. Oh, I loved it. I loved it because I yeah, thought I it was incredibly genuine. I think it's anything genuine. like that. You know, it kind of reminded me of, so sometimes like actors and actresses, they'll have such an emotional moment together when they're creating mm-hmm. a film and and, you, and they get together, like they kind of hook up or whatever. This to me was kind of kind of like that moment where they've done so much together that they're just expressing that they're expressing and mm-hmm. it came out through a kiss. And I just, yeah. it was just really beautiful to me. And I also, and I, I, sorry, I think Adam driver is probably one of our current, one of our best actors working. He's incredible. in I, this movie. Yeah. I really like him a lot. But, um, but the Kylo Ren, but I think he brings a lot more to that character than is on the page. I a hundred percent agree. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. He is doing so much with so little here yeah. in so little mm-hmm. runway. He is, he has so little runway to convince us that he is, gone from mm-hmm. evil person who wants to kill anyone that could be more powerful than he is yeah. to my mom you know communicated to me with her last breath and it's going to change who i am and i i, I think i'm he gonna was release al- all that i think he was already feeling kind of some kind of a way although i my- but it's his performance that makes us believe that like yeah the, his, the- his trajectory seemed to be i'm gonna take out the baddest bad guy so that i'm the best guy mm-hmm. and then that shift you know like you said when his mom but uh, I'm just saying he had very little space to yeah. do that in it, and I totally bought it. Yeah, I think in, in a lesser actor's hands, I don't mm-hmm. think you buy it. I think it feels forced yeah. and weird. Um, but but I actually really bought it. I, th- I thought he was great. I also really liked that they didn't have... Um, uh, oh, God, I just forgot his name. I should look up the characters' names. Well, uh, uh, he, Palpatine, Hux. Uh, he's one of the... Poe Dameron? Cl- nope, the other one. Ray? Nope, the other... Finn? Finn! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I like that Finn, like you kind of knew that he was maybe trying to get that he liked her, had a crush or something like his secret that he didn't like whatever he was trying to tell Ray. Oh, you don't know what it was? I don't know what it was. It's that he's a force user. Oh, That's... I thought it was that he's pregnant. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Did the I... movie not make that clear? I thought no, the movie kind of no, made that clear. No. Maybe it's because Mm-mm. I'm I'm trained to think that it's a love thing. Mm. But I thought he was telling, I thought he was going to say that he like He ends loved up saying her. it to the girl he meets uh, that was also a former uh, yes. stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He ends up telling her gotcha. instead. Well, I loved that that didn't turn into like him saying like confessing his love and them mm-hmm. kissing at the end. I was really worried about that. Instead, it was like this group hug. My friends are still alive thing. Right. That was really cool. And Poe has his former hookup that he <laughs> yeah. is. That stuff was hilarious to me. Where yeah. oh, where, when oh the Carrie Russell character. Yeah, where he gives her a look at the end, like hey. You know, he gives her a hey look and she yeah. like rolls her, her eyes or whatever. And he just like walks off. I, I thought that was yeah. really great. No, I, that actually that was really good. Um, I will say about that hug, though. Um, I, I, I think Force Awakens is still my favorite of the three. Um, and I know a lot of people complain, though, that it, it was almost like it seemed to be like a beat for beat remake of of New Hope at times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. But I did. And I mean, and maybe it was, but I still really enjoyed it. But I did think the end of this movie, that hug was a little weird because I I think the, I think the series, the trilogy wants us to, wants us to, wants those characters to be solo Luke and Leia. Yeah, definitely. And, and, but they're not like, I mean, they, I I just don't feel that in there. I mean, Poe and Ray, from what we've seen on screen, haven't even had that much interaction. Um, Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot of time in between, you know, like maybe that we don't see that, that we're kind of believing that they're all, you know, compadres. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, there is. I, I'm going to go ahead and get into my big negative because it is a huge negative for me. Uh, this movie plays it so safe and is so unwilling to mm-hmm. take risks. And it this movie pretends to do huge things. Chewie huge, didn't die. Well, he sh- listen. This is a better movie if Chewie stays dead. Oh. And it, at least, at least let him stay dead for 30 minutes I or something. Gasped. Like, that's, yeah, that's when I was right. Like, <gasps> Because listen to what that does, and it's and now it's false. It's just all false. 
But what it does is it allows us to understand how Ray may actually be struggling with really turning to the dark side. Mm -hmm. Like with yeah. this, like, like, like yeah. how she would be able to convince herself, right. I'm broken. Right. I, I just killed somebody very important to me mm -hmm. because I was in a power struggle. Yeah. I might as well give in to it. Right. But we are never. That's what I thought was going to happen. We are never allowed to live in that. Like no. we know within five minutes that he's still alive. And then who, she knows within 15 minutes that who, he's still alive. Who else was a, was a dead, not dead. Well, there was Ray herself, but then uh, uh, who was a dead, not dead? There was several. Well, there's also we thought, there's died. also C three PO sacrifices oh, yeah. his yep. memory, dead, but not it's, dead. it's given back to him mm -hmm. like almost immediately. Like this movie does not have the courage of its conviction to actually yeah. mean something right. like deeply and important. Can you imagine how deep and meaningful this movie could have been if she really had to struggle with actually killing her friend? Like, like I mean, her her co pilot. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, whew, like that could have been really. I don't know. I just I was really disappointed by how how risk averse this this movie was so that's my big thing. did you guys think that there was going to be this um healing energy transference back and forth between ray and ben for like the last 30 minutes of the movie while i had <laughs> well, a conversation just kept, <laughs> just kept going back and forth oh was that that's when my sinning brain kicked in and i was <laughs> yeah, like okay so, so how does this work <laughs> so in the fan service stuff like what 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 were the scenes that you really uh i guess what were the what were the couple scenes that you turned you rolled your eyes aaron you know i I I kind of halfway rolled my eyes, oh, but it was because of a, of a because of a spoken line in one part. So I wonder if that's no, yours. Tell me. Go ahead. Tell me. It, it's it's when Lando appears in uh, mm -hmm. the the oh magically we've arrived at this desert and everything is happening at the exact moment that we arrived at this desert moment. Mm -hmm. um, Burning Man. And they on even said, planet. "Oh, how convenient!" You know, like oh, yeah. we just happen to be here, and then Lando is there, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I don't remember who says the line, but when they go into that vehicle, he says... Lando says it. This is Lando. No, he Lando doesn't say, I'm Lando. No, I thought you were going to say, I've got a bad feeling about this, but go, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. It was it was saying, <laughs> this is Lando, and then being like, no, yeah, we know. I didn't like that line. That that line could have gone away. Let the audience, if they don't know who it is, be like, who is that? And ask later. That was the only kind of thing that I rolled my eyes for at. For the most part, the fan service worked for me. Um, for the most part, the humor worked for me. But in both cases, there were moments where I did roll my eyes. Uh, Humor-wise, I rolled my eyes when the stormtroopers saw the Knights of Ren. And I think they said squad goals. And <laughs> oh, I think they did. I think and you're I was right. Like, I get it. But at the same time, that's way too 2019. Uh, for something that happened in a long time ago. But I felt the same way about Droid Please in uh, Force Awakens. So, you know, like, the, there are just some times where it just becomes too modern colloquially. Uh, mm -hmm. for, for It just distracts me. And that happens with the humor in this a little bit. What about you, Jonathan? When did you roll your eyes? Uh, I, yeah, like I said, I just got taken out of the movie a couple of times. The 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 Harrison Ford scene, I I did not like that. I didn't either. And and here's the mm -hmm. unfortunate thing. Yeah, was he a Jedi? No, see, he's not, and he shouldn't be able to appear as a Force ghost. That has to be. I some didn't sort even of, think about that. It just has to be some sort of memory or or some or he Leia. Had a Leia is projecting him in her final moments. Yeah, or, that wasn't clear. No, it, it and it's and problem is that I hundred percent guarantee you that was meant to be Carrie. Fisher uh, that oh. she was supposed to have that moment at her death where as as a Jedi because yeah. she is she does have force powers where she just like Luke in Last Can Jedi project. projected herself and gave her life to project herself one last time to her, to, son. To her son to change him and how powerful oh, and beautiful that would have so been right um, but yeah, I didn't even they think about CGI it that way her. And yeah. they did a pretty good job audio. of using Carrie Fisher in this movie. I think they did, too. They did so I, good. I thought it was very respectful and very well done. And yeah. you could tell at times that they were building around, you know, like lines that they had her saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could feel it a couple times. Yeah. As somebody who works in audio and has done editing tricks like that, like, mm -hmm. you know, you can kind of feel that. But um, but no, I thought overall they did Man, a good job. Speaking with her. of that Force Ghost thing, though, that seems like a pretty decent gig. Like, <laughs> you can just go wherever the hell you want. Right. Yeah. You don't need to like eat anymore or have yeah. money or I mean, I'm just saying like, can I ask a question too? Pretty just, sweet. So, so the assumption is that Ray killed all the Sith because she rejected the Sith power. Mm -hmm. And she, by the way, where did, where did the stadium full of Sith come from? Where did those Star Destroyers yeah, there was come very from? Little like, about that. I actually uh, understood the I first think, viewing. I think it's, I think it's inferred that he summoned them. From where? The ether? How, uh, yeah. I, I think you're right. I think, which I, is basically just saying reasons, but I think, yeah. I think that there's so many of that. Yeah. 
I guess if I really, really wanted to think critically about it and not be emotional about this movie, I might bring it down to a boot because of that. Because there <laughs> no, are I don't so mind many, that stuff. I, there's so many of those conveniences. But that's in okay. It. That's how you make movies. Like it does yeah. not bother me. But it, but it's so fast paced that it's coming so quickly. Right. Like, oh, we're believing this. Oh, we're swallowing that. I'd be oh, we're more, doing this. I'd be more likely to be bothered by my other big negative, which is how MacGuffin-y this movie is. Like how many side quests. We gotta go mm. here. We gotta go there. Yeah. We gotta go here. And and it just, you know, oh, here's the object. We, and now it's a dagger and what does this dagger mean and now it's a wayfinder and like all these objects that you know it's just it gives them something to do while we're waiting to get to the you know the ultimate confrontation yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. but i also kind of don't mind that because i like seeing them in different places sure. sure like how cool was that scene where they're fighting where the waves are i that, that was, was my, so cool that was my favorite lightsaber battle man that um, was badass mm-hmm. it was is good. It, it is now my number two right now and it's maybe recency bias but it's now my number two favorite <laughs> lightsaber battle uh next to duel like, of the fates some really good... i love that you have a list of lightsaber battles <laughs> there's some really really good fights in this like the end whenever she's like fighting the red mm-hmm. guys and she's grabbing a blaster and then like shoving it back that way and blah, mm-hmm. blah. it was it was no, pretty there's cool. some really entertaining action sequences in this movie um actually uh, spider man far from home um was that was something we didn't really talk about but when we were talking about that in the episode proper but um i thought that had some really ingenious action sequences and i think this was probably the best since then yeah, yeah that, um, that, that i've seen on, on the big screen the this star year was oof, that was really cool also by the way i went back and watched the trailers and one of my favorite moments of the movie is the entire teaser trailer the moment when she runs in mm-hmm. flips in that's actually the trailer I mm-hmm. felt so bad for people who had that, like, because experiencing that in the movie was so cool was so because cool. of what it meant and what was going on. Yeah. And then, like, I just, man, that you're was... like watching her going, "What are you doing?" And that leads directly. To be fair, I didn't remember what happened in the trailer, so when that came up, I was like, <laughs> "That's what Andrew was... always says." He's like, "It doesn't bother me because I have no memory." <laughs> I remember the trailers. I don't like watching them. Yeah, uh, and that leads directly to uh, again that chewy scene where they're fighting over a spaceship that's trying to leave the planet, like playing tug of. Mm-hmm. war with a spaceship how cool was that yeah. idea um somebody actually commented that they hated that well that's fine so, people but that's just a thing yeah people have different millions perspectives. of people have, are watching this and having opinions yeah yeah for sure and i don't know if this was i mean i would assume this was not intentional and it's probably just unfortunate to where it fell in the release order but the end of this movie felt very avengers endgame um i even made a joke because chris and barrett and i saw this together and i even made a joke to one of them that if lando had said on your left i wouldn't have been surprised because <laughs> it was just that kind of you know penultimate moment right where everyone's there um well the very end of this movie i thought was was really beautiful where she buried this mm-hmm. the the lightsabers on tatooine that was and, great and said and took the name skywalker i thought i i've seen people make fun of that i, I completely that. disagree i think that is really beautiful i think it speaks to something about family and what in naming yourself and absolutely uh, like i it is i i can and i haven't been through this but i can imagine for somebody who has been a, a foster child or adopted by another family in that decision of taking their name like what a powerful thing yeah. Um, I really liked that, uh, that ending. No, I, 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 that's, um, yeah, no, I, I completely understood that scene. I thought that was great. Um, that'll transition me into what I think the movie is saying. Yeah, do it. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say like my laugh out loud moment. I don't know if you guys remember your laugh out loud moments, but my laugh out loud moment was when C-3PO was wiped. And then he comes back and introduces himself, and the little aliens like, "Oh, I'm so and so." I la- I thought that was really funny. That was great. Yeah. I also I like- thought there. I like that there was a droid with an anxiety disorder. Yeah, that's true. Like, don't touch that me. That was interesting. I like that. Okay, uh, that, that droid moment is so was Hux admitting to being the spy. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I laughed at that too. <laughs> when he was like, "I'm the spy," <laughs> he was almost like, like "Get over it." No. <laughs> um, the, that droid. Uh, my one issue is uh, that that droid speaks English. And droids don't speak English. <laughs> That's uh, true. C three PO only speaks English because he's a translating droid. Droids yeah. speak droid, anyways. So That's interesting. So. Ooh, we're sending it. <laughs> we're sending it so Nerd. hard. Um, I think that my like my take on it is that there's this element of children 
throughout all of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ray not knowing where she's from. I think this is about finding your identity. Yeah, I think so. I think I, you're right. I think it's about like sometimes you know your identity, sometimes you don't know your identity. So there's stuff in your past. It's like embracing who you are now, taking on a new name. Obviously, it was kind of on the nose and at the very end of this one. But there was such a pain, you know, like uh, entire planets having their children taken away from them to, you know, be taken into the um, for the empire. The empire? No, it's first order. First now, order. But Thank yeah. you. Um, the first order and uh, and then you know like just this displacement. Ray thinking that she was abandoned, but they sold her so that she would be safe. And then finding out her name, and then still wanting to like carry on her parents' legacy, but reject the parts that she doesn't want to be. Like there's just such a, and I think that's like all, I can see it peppered in each of in of them in their own way of just mm-hmm. finding a new identity. Like Luke himself, he ran away and he made a mistake. He's finding a new identity and he's, you know, reclaiming his name. And Re- Ren is doing the very same thing. You know, Kylo is or Ben himself or whatever. Like everyone's kind of like finding their own stuff. And it's like a passing of the torch of generations in a way. And I don't mind the fan service of that at all because there is something really powerful watching these people that you kind of uh, are putting your own self into and you're cheering them on as they're making the really hard decisions of going off to war and fighting for something like the handing off from Lando saying my time is over, even Chewie or, you know, everyone Mm. just kind of like this is up to you now, like the passing of the torch. That's a really beautiful thing. I do wish that they would have had more emotional emotion in it, but the movie was clipping so fast. There's really not a lot of time, Mm -hmm. but at the same time it's there. So that's kind of what I It's funny too. You say there's not a lot of time, even though this movie is like two and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever, it does go by super quick because they're just moving all over the place. Have you ever thought about the fact that handing someone your lightsaber is literally passing the torch? Like, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, it literally is, you know, those, those handoffs. And And by the way, transitions of lightsabers have been my two favorite moments of the last two movies Uh, (laughs) in the throne room. When, when Kylo force pulls the lightsaber through, um, Snoke and Ray grabs it is the biggest chill bump scene of the last Jedi for me. I love it every single time I watch it. And in this one, when they use the their force transfer powers yeah. that they have for her to give him the lightsaber, I just my brain went nuts. I love that. I didn't see it coming. I, I love the way they handled it. I love the look on Kylo's face when he gets it and he's mm-hmm. like, "Okay, we're doing this." Like I just love everything about that moment in this movie. It's it's, so it's my favorite chill bump movie. Yeah, or chill bump moment uh, of the movie. So yeah, cool. Um, uh, I, we also didn't talk about their force bond. I like. Uh, I I wondered about it in all the previous movies, and this is the one where if I when I watch it again, if I watch it again, I want to try to pull out more information about. When you that. say force bond, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking because about? Because they can see where each other are in a way. They right. can battle from across and transfer distances. actual they, matter, mm-hmm. right? And that was hinted at in Last Jedi, by the way, because he got wet from the waves mm-hmm. from where she was. So, yeah. like, it was. And this one really plays with that. Obviously, the big moment they they've realized now that they can do it. So then they intentionally trade an item uh, to to help each other out. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another reason why the moment between them is so powerful. And his smile before he dies is so powerful because it's like they have the, they have a bond that will never exist again. Right. And it's it's gone now. And so there's just like this emptiness at the end of the movie and then a fullness, too, of there being no more uh, First Order. Right. So. Anyways, that was really powerful. But that like that bond, the fact that they're not going to play with that, the fact that that's not going to turn into some side series where we get to see them together yet. But the fan (laughs) art will live on forever and I will I will be liking every fan art I see. (laughs) You you totally stand Kylo and Ray. It is is very obvious. It's a beautiful thing. Raylo. Do we call it Raylo? (laughs) It's really nice to hear though. after all the crap I've read over the weekend about people talking about how like, you know, it's it was like the equivalent of somebody going to an abusive relationship and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't think you're reading into that. No, I mean, I, people should read into things what they read into. I mean, I'm not going to knock that, but I just, I don't know. I didn't see it that way. I think, I think you have to remember that Ray sees through matter. She can read energy mm-hmm. and we people can't do that. So I think in that moment, we're meant to, to know that she fully sees that he is 
uh, on the light side that he is now a Jedi. And I think sometimes people don't want to forget and mm-hmm. you shouldn't forget abuse and you shouldn't forget things like that. I'm not saying that you should just let all that stuff go. But there are times when you're like, oh, this is different. Everything is changed now and this is new and this is different. And to, to be able to celebrate that with a kiss, it doesn't mean like we're going to have children. It just it was a beautiful expression anyway. I yeah. yeah. And, and again, all the more reason why I wish this movie had taken some risks and done something really big, yeah. you know, and mm-hmm. it, it would just been next level. This movie yeah. could have been next level for me. Uh, and it just it wasn't. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm the same way as it is. It's you know, it's a B. It's it's a it's a perfectly fine movie. Okay. I also I also didn't like and this kind of gets into some of the nitty gritty Internet kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. this movie, the way this movie and The Last Jedi are fighting with each other is really yeah. noticeable. This movie gives the middle finger to The Last Jedi like three or four specific different times. I forgot. I I have not watched them close enough together. So there's so. there's the moment where Luke grabs the lightsaber in Rise of Skywalker and says, "Hey, you got to be careful how you treat these things. They're important mm-hmm. or whatever." Whereas in The Last Jedi, when she handed him the lightsaber, he threw it over his shoulder, which was one of the best moments. Right, in my opinion. Um yeah. so, you know, there's that whole thing. There's the way it treats Kelly Tran's uh character Rose in this movie who is just gone like she's hanging out with leia you know right. on the and does like nothing in this movie and she was so valuable and important in the last jedi to finn's growth and finn's relationship and then there's not like they don't even hardly speak a word to each other in do you this think movie. that was yeah. partially like the actress's desire i mean considering she what she got, went through yeah. or is it just disney's response to like did they capitulate to those oh, yeah. things you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. like it's, I, it's just that kind of stuff was well and it's kind of one of those things too where like and i always you know this was an issue with and some of like the star trek movies a lot of fans will talk about this like in first contact they create this character that alfrey woodward plays where and they have like all these scenes and you're sitting there thinking well yeah but why couldn't that have been like picard and dr crusher talking and like you know you know you've got gates mcfadden who's been on this show in the series for you know multiple years is stuck in the background and here you kind of have that where they create the carrie russell character and they bring some new people into this and then they kind of do disservice to some people that have yeah. already been in the series because yeah. of it. I can see how that would be interpreted as a middle finger. Yeah. Yeah. It just yeah. it felt like these these two movies are fighting with each other. And it's it is I think it's a result of the fact that they did not have an overall plan, that they gave each director free reign to make the movie mm-hmm. they wanted to make. Mm-hmm. And they didn't like they need a Kevin Feige. They need the well, person. And that, and that white that might be why this last one felt so had to be like fast paced because it's like, mm-hmm. like we got to button up 700 things. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Into, into and I, something. Else. And I wonder if like they had just let the what's the guy who directed law the jurassic world uh, trevorrow colin trevorrow yeah and he was originally supposed to direct this one right yep. yes um, yeah, it he almost still makes has you wonder if credit. that would have been better just because at least you would have had somebody giving their own take on it versus like this like you said this comes off weird because this feels more like something correlated to force awakens mm-hmm. that didn't want the last jedi to happen yeah yeah, exactly. And just in the reversal of Ray's parentage, you know, The Last Jedi says her parents were yeah. nobodies. And then this one's like, yeah. actually, your grandfather's Palpatine. It's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, so yeah. I have heard people say they think maybe that that was just Kylo lying to her. Like it was never intended. Oh, to sure. Be the well, that's answer. what it has to be now. You yeah. Know, like, um, you know. So any, anyways, that, that stuff kind of annoyed me. But overall, I had a good time. I mean, a B is, is still a good me grade. Too. Yeah. Yeah, B is fine. Um, I have one question, super fast. So she didn't become a Sith because she didn't kill in hatred? Right. She didn't give okay. in to her hate. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to make sure I understood that because she was... Yeah, because that was confusing to me, too, because I was sitting there thinking the whole time. It's like, well, yeah, just kill him and then just do whatever you want to. <laughs> right. But I think it was because she didn't kill him in hate that she fought against yeah. him. Yeah. For the good that she maintained her Jedi status. And yeah. then the power that she ex- expelled is what, like, she just overexpelled her power and then she died yeah. from not having it. And then Ren used his power uh, to basically transfer his life force into her so she could live. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. But I'm yeah, sure I, I got that's, that. That's how I understand it. Okay. Um, yeah, the 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 uh, the fan service of having like every single Jedi ever ever speak to her that was uh, cool. during her moment was really moving to that me. Was, that I, was I really that was a that. really moving I part. I did like that. Yeah, yeah, that was really powerful. I got chills. In like that I heard, part. like I heard everybody in there. Yeah. I heard Samuel Jackson in there. I heard mm-hmm. like all the Jedi's that, yeah. that we've known. So yeah, um, and she couldn't hear them before. Right. Yeah. Was, she kept saying, "Speak to me. Be with you know, me. Be with be with me." Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Yeah. So, um, other fan servicey things that I kind of rolled my eyes out. I didn't. Uh, I didn't think like the Chewie getting his medal 
thing as you know as as moving as it is it was just like you know i don't know it, wasn't it that something little... that was from princess leia yeah yeah so like that was him getting something that was hers well he he had his um medal from a new hope right isn't that did i misunderstand that i didn't understand that part oh okay so i don't I've, know yeah i, I mean, believe that's right but so. metal we'll get we'll get told <laughs> anyways so it, it kind of went back and forth for me, but mostly, mostly I love the fan service because I'm a fan. Yeah, and like you said, I was never bored. Like I was entertained yeah. the entire time. Yeah, light speed skipping, whatever. It was cool. It was fun. Oh, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, that. Oh that. Oh that. Uh, all right. If well, we that's... keep talking about it, I'm not going to like it. Stop. We got to stop now. <laughs> that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> the nays down to a C minus. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, thanks for joining us for the uh, the mini pod, the very first and maybe very last BTS mini pod. So, uh, so we <laughs> hope you pod. appreciate it. Yeah. No, you guys, this is the most requested or thing Sithy from our pod. survey. I just said Sift Pod. Well, I meant Sithy. That means you're going to have to watch uh, more movies today if we're going to be doing more mini pods. No, so. you are misunderstanding what a mini pod could be. <laughs> we can make a mini pod whatever you want. All it doesn't right, have enough. to be. Maybe you we can, can make s- me play a video game. There we go. We can do all kinds of things on these. All right. I'm not liking where this is this is going. We need to shut. <laughs> this down <laughs> that's going to wrap it up for this behind the scenes mini pod don't forget to make sure you are subscribed and go ahead and leave a comment or rating as well you can hang out with us on twitter at cinema sins bts is the main twitter i am at aaron dicer she is at danae says c-e-n-e-e-s-a-y-s and he is at sam loomis 13 so for jonathan watkins today Hughes and myself we'll see you later thanks for listening send any feedback to behind the sins pod at gmail.com And be sure to subscribe or message us at Twitter. And be sure to visit CinemaSins.com.